Hey guys, it's me, Melissa. Um, I'm by myself today, and I'm in the back room. I'm gonna scooch my little butt over there. We're gonna be painting this, um, what is this, big arch. So anyway, I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell, and I'll be right there. I guess I have to come down here for you to see me, so uh, maybe I won't sit on the chair. Anyway, uh, this is a piece that has been in our shop for a while, and it hasn't sold, and Farmhouse doesn't do super well here, but Coastal does. So I'm going to see if by painting this out, if we can sell it. So anyway, I'm going to be um, doing a little bit of, I'm going to get off this so you can see me, it'll be easier. Um, I'm going to be using Savannah Mist for the bulk of it and I'm going to do a little blending with some dusty blue. Then we're going to distress it a little bit and seal it and then um, we're going to do that with flat and then I'm going to use some whitewash glaze over it to enhance some of the features. So that's the plan today. Hopefully we can get it all done. I did forget the heat gun so there may be a point where I have to run out and get that because Again, today, today I'm by myself. And I can't really sit down here and do this work, so I might have to reposition myself. Okay. I didn't plan this out completely well. We had it on the floor originally, but that was way too much work. So, I'm just gonna have to see if, uh, you might have to deal with my head being cut off a little bit. So this doesn't have a shiny coat on it or anything. So we shouldn't have to worry too much about any it being slick or needing to um, have any kind of primer. I'm not, I'm not really worried about that at all. So let me get the iPad out and then I can see when you talk to me. Talk to me. Sue is running around taking pictures for the staging company. Teresa is not here. I am by myself. There I am. Oh, hi, Rashonda. Good to see you. Okay, so now I've got this so I can see comments. There we go. All right, so again, we are using um, Savannah Mist. So I got this, I'm not gonna worry about getting into all these little crevices. Uh, I just am not too terribly worried about that. I got this from Peacock Park when we opened the store. And so we've had it for, you know, about a year now. And again, it just hasn't really sold. I, I love the look of it, but customers, um, they like it, but nobody's pulled the trigger. So I'm gonna see if we give it a little makeover. Sometimes, when something's not selling, you can, you know, if you just change the look up a bit, it doesn't always have to be marked down to get rid of it. Sometimes just give it a facelift and it'll go. Sometimes, sometimes it's just taking it to a different store. Um, and that was always a possibility too. But the other stores that I sell in, uh, kind of the higher price stuff don't do really well. So I was trying to kind of keep it in our store. So it's Friday. What are your plans for the weekend? As Teresa would say, what dumpsters do you plan on diving into? We are babysitting tonight, so I'm gonna have grandbabies tonight with me. Looking forward to that. Now I'm gonna be doing some of the darker blue up in some of these areas, so I'm not worried about getting really good coverage there because I'm going to go in with the darker blue and manage that. I'm going to try and do a little mirror glass this weekend. I have a project fit for that. So I'm hopeful that I'll be able to do something there with that. I'll try to remember to film it. 
my absolute best YouTube video is a mirror glass project. So I know that there is definite interest in that. I'm gonna make this dark blue. Make sure there's no lumps or bumps here. Move over. Hi, Valerie. Okay, this is hard on my knees, so I'm gonna have to roll on that stool. You just might not see me much. Hi, Jessica. I'm not worried if it's getting on the side, but I'm not focusing on, on getting all these little holes filled. Your shed is full of projects, but your parents want to start cleaning out their house because they're old. So you have some free projects for a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's good. I know I, I took Teresa to my warehouse this morning. She was looking for some pieces for her to paint. Um, on, you know, like she paints as a side hustle. And, um, well, and as a main hustle. Um, just her hustle, I suppose. I took her to the warehouse this morning and she was just like, what is this? She's like, I could just, I could just live here. I'm like, yeah, we just don't have a shower there. Otherwise, I think um, we figured out we have. So last year, last year at the peak of our staging, we had a, a little over 90 houses out. And it always changes because some houses are big and some houses are small, but we had about 90 houses out. And this year, right now, we have about 43 out, I think. So they're fully staged, all, all interior spaces. So that means that we have about 45 to 40, 45 to 50 houses worth of furniture, art, accessories, beds, linens, towels, all that in the warehouse right now. So she was, she was a little overwhelmed. It was funny. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Danielle. So hopefully I don't, I'm trying to stay in the picture, even though um, I'm on this little rolly chair. It just was hurting my knees trying to, trying to paint on the floor. I have noticed as I get older, a lot more things hurt and that kind of sucks. So if you're just tuning in, we are painting this. It's been in the store for a while and it hasn't sold. So I am giving it a coastal update. Farmhouse doesn't do really well in our store. So I'm doing a coastal update to see if we can get this baby moving. And I'm right now I am using um, I can never remember the color Savannah Mist, which is a really soft blue. And then I'll be adding in a darker blue, blending that around the corners and the details. And that blue is dusty blue here. You can kind of see it um, next to the paint. So it's a little darker. Then we're going to seal it and add some white glaze around it as well. I think I'm going to do the dusty blue on the top here, so I'm not going to paint that. So let me just finish over here. Let's see. Yvette says, this weekend you're finishing two side tables. One is finished and the other halfway done. Good job. You picked up several pieces to work on three vanities, a secretary desk, an oval coffee table, a dresser. Dang, girl, you're working on a lot. I'm tired just looking at it. I'm trying to share the video with the neighbor, Amy. Well, hi, Amy, if you get to come on. We come live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at two. Share different DIY tips and how to do stuff. And then we also have a YouTube channel. So you should follow us there. It's 
harder for me to chat when it's just me. Like, I don't know how to carry on a single-sided conversation for an hour. That is not my area of expertise. Not my area of expertise. All right, so I guess I will break out the other blue and I'll start doing up here and then I'll come around and do that area maybe. here so I'm gonna blend these together so we're gonna do a little blending today right now I'm just gonna sort of do the base coat of it um, so I'm not worried about blending just yet hi Shari hi Diane so I made it so that these were not too far apart um, in color palette I just want this to be a nice little coastal I want some of it to look like it's faded or I mean maybe it was a different color but they go together but it's just got a little bit more depth and then like I said I'm gonna add some white this would be I've got another one of these to paint and on that one I might do this Dixie Belle sea spray because I think that will be fun too I'm gonna hop down just to kind of get around this corner here and I'm not worried at all about getting it on the light blue area because I'm gonna eventually blend all this Sorry if I get out of the frame here for a little bit. I'm trying not to, but Fridays we usually work on furniture, so it's always a little bigger. And I usually have somebody with me. Usually Sue or Teresa is with me. And uh, since I have a partner, so if one of us is off camera, there's always the other one. But today it's just me. Everybody was busy today. So Sue did tell me last night that based on her photography schedule today, she didn't think she would have time to get here before the live. So I only picked out one project, trying to make sure it was something reasonable that I could hopefully get done in an hour. The good news is, is I'm a fast painter, so that helps. Oh, well, thank you, Shar. I've got you enjoy the colors together. Hi, Carrie. Um, Hi, GE and Brenda. So if you're just joining us, this is a piece that we've had in the shop for a while. Um, Farmhouse doesn't really sell in our shop. Coastal does much better. So I am updating this farmhouse to look a little more beachy so that hopefully it will sell. I'm using Dixie Belle paint. I've got Savannah Mist down here and I am using Dusty Blue at the top. I will be blending um, in some of these areas so that it's a good, almost a faded uh, progression. So I'm not really worried that that I'm hitting, you know, these lower areas because actually I'm going to blend all that before we're done. I'll come around to the other side to work on that um, and try to stay out of your way so you can still see. And I'm in the back room today just because um, we have sections of the store pulled apart right now and thought it would be quieter to be back here. It's an interesting week. It's an interesting week. I'll have more to tell you about it next week, but it's an interesting week for sure. So anybody else have fun and interesting weekend plans? Oh, at least my hair is looking half decent from where I am. Let's see, oops, not those comments. Okay, no more comments yet. Trying to keep up with the comments. I'm looking forward to babysitting tonight. I do not get to see my grandkids nearly often enough. So that will be a lot of fun for me. I've heard the, the littlest one, uh, Elton, that he is getting good at walking. So that should be um, exhausting to watch him. 
but that'll be fun. And then um, Jean-Luc is, he, he's almost two, he'll be two in January. And he is going to love the Christmas tree. They don't have a Christmas tree set up in their house because, well, they have two children under the age of two. So um, all Cassie would do all day long probably would be trying to get them out of the Christmas tree. So I cannot say, as I blame her on that one at all, um, so this will be their first experience really at a Christmas tree because Jean-Luc was so little last year, he wouldn't remember it. So we'll see. We'll see. I have this feeling he is going to be pushing the, the on off button on a Christmas tree because there is a part in, um, I have some sconces that hang on my wall and they have a button for on off. And that's his favorite thing to do at my house is go to the sconces go to the fixture and click the button and have me say on, off, on, off, on, off, uh, for about an hour. Let's see, Rashonda is finishing up some Christmas projects. Very fun. Are they gifts or are they um, like projects to sell? And then Shari is finishing a cheetah piece. Ooh. Working on a conversation bent, nice. It's almost the same gray as we're using, awesome. I'm gonna try to come around here. Sorry, you're gonna get the back of my head while I try to get up in there. Up in there, up in there. Hi, Trina. Good to have you. So I figure whoever's gonna be hanging this may actually see up into here. So I wanna be sure that you do actually get up in here pretty well. Up in here, up in here. Heather, is that you I hear? Must not be Heather, I hear. I'm in the back area, so it shouldn't be that friendly ghost. He's only usually at the front. I wish there was a better way to do this, so I'm not just watching the brush. This is probably one of those pieces that I should have decided to do as a video, not, you know, like, not like a live, but a recorded one. So you could see all the different angles and whatever, but I'm not sure how to do that here to make it better for you. Uh, let's see. What is fun and exciting to go on about? Again, I'm not a good talker all by myself. I like to have a conversational person, which is why I usually do lives with somebody else. I'm usually super quiet by myself. When I paint, I usually put an audiobook on. So right now, I just started the second Dune book. So for those of you who have been here a little while, you might remember that I talked about um, the first Dune book that I started listening to it because I saw previews for the upcoming movie. And the, um, the guy who plays Aquaman is Jason Momoa, Momoa is going to be the new, um, the new Duke Atreides in Dune. And I'd never seen it, but the movie made it look really good. I'd only ever heard bad things about the one that Sting was in because I heard that you didn't understand that the movie was really short for as long as the book was. So if you hadn't watched the, if you hadn't read the book, that the movie didn't make any sense. And so I never bothered to, to watch the movie. Now I am listening to the audiobook when I'm driving home or when I'm sitting and painting so that I can understand the movie when it comes out because it looks really good and 
kind of disappointed now that I've read the book how how little um, Jason Momoa might be in it, but I'll enjoy the time that he is, if and you know what I mean. So, but it does look like it's going to be good, so I'm enjoying that. Okay, there we go. And what I'm doing now is I'm kind of going along the edge, and this had all been blocked in with the Savannah Mist, and so now around the edges, I'm, I'm catching the edges, but I'm also catching like around the cutouts so that when I blend, those are like darkened areas to kind of give it some dimension. Um, and then I'm just kind of, right now, again, basing, it's super messy and that's okay. Actually, can you even see it? Let me move this up a little bit so maybe you can see it a little bit. I'm trying not to knock that paint over on the edge over there. Because I do have a bottle of paint over there. There you can see a little more. So now I'm kind of going along this edge here too so that I can get a little blendy blendy there. I'm hoping that coastal cabinet that I painted with all the blending sells this weekend because it did not sell last weekend. I was a little sad about that. Not gonna lie. I might put it on Facebook Marketplace though because you know, the only place we really advertise it is on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm not a super neat blender. Like, I get people who are. I like it to be a little messier. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not Brandy or Crescenda. Crisanda, how does she say her name? Let's see. Uh, Roshana says she is sealing rocking chairs for gifts for the grandbabies, finishing jewelry boxes, and then cutting boards. Nice. And rolling pins. Very nice. Shari says that she's always afraid of blue, afraid it won't sell. But seeing it with this gray, I'm totally convinced. Try a piece. Uh, you know, you're in New York, so I don't know. Here in Florida, blue sells really well. Um, I sell much, I sell a lot more blue than I do white. Um, again, our store doesn't do much farmhouse. We have white pieces that sit in here forever. And then I go out to the Weathered Wheel in McClenny and it'll sell like the first day or two out there, the first, you know, within a few days, often the first day because they love their, their farmhouse pieces and a pretty white piece sells there like instantly here. Here, I just like almost can't give away white. People want color, they want coastal. We just do a lot, we get a lot more of that here. So let's see. <clears throat> oh, nice, Lorraine. The blending and dripping that you did last week, she's added to a jewelry box. It's come out so good. Awesome, that's fun. Great to hear that. Um, Kelsey, hello. Christana, that's it, Christana. Um, and uh, I agree, everyone's projects do sound fun and interesting. Um, you should share them with us. We'd love to see them. We all love to see what everybody else does, in my opinion. I think it helps us be more creative when we get to see what everybody else is doing. It's not that we're trying to steal it, but it does sometimes inspire us or sometimes like, you know, we're afraid of something. Just like Shari said, you know, maybe being afraid of blue with some, but seeing with the grays that it's, you know, it's a little less intimidating. You can kind of see it in a different way that may work in your area. And we all live in different areas, so we have different markets. And even here, if you go 20 miles one way or 20 miles a different way, it's very different things that sell. So kind of like I was saying with the white, that in my store, I can't give away white. Um, black is becoming super popular too. And I love, I love good bit of black. Um, I think it is a super grounding color. We don't use it much in staging because it doesn't photograph well. Um, and so obviously our work ha is very visual. And so with it not photographing well, that becomes a problem. Okay. got my misting bottle so I'm gonna be right back
Okay, so I don't know where my misting bottles are hiding, so I grabbed a little bowl of water. Sorry about that. So I'm just gonna use a little bowl of water to blend. You don't have to have super fancy anythings. Um, you know, it's always helpful to see kind of how things can work. So I do have two different brushes. I have my Savannah Mist and I have my um, blue, better names today, sorry, Dusty Blue. And so I want them to blend. I'm really gonna stick, I'm, I'm gonna primarily use the same brush. I know Chris Donna likes to do the two different brushes and we'll kind of see how it works, but um, I typically use the same brush when I blend and I just sort of water it down a little and then I'll go back and forth between the two colors until I get the blend that I, that I want and I like. You do really need to have a good wet brush um, for this to work. And I'm, again, I'm not looking for the perfect gradient blend. I just want it to kind of softly go from one to the other. And even if it's a little bit patchy, I'm kind of okay with that. that might have been a little too much water. But I find if you, if you kind of just go back and forth with the colors, that it, it all comes out okay. So water and then color. So I'm just kind of floating it out and floating it in. So it's got a nice, a nice soft blend. Really working it back and forth is helpful, I find. But hopefully you can see that it is darker on the outside and a little lighter on the inside. I injured my knee in April. And let me tell you, it has not been the same. Um, I cannot spend like any time kneeling anymore. Uh, it just really hurts. So I just have a little bottle of water or a little bowl of water and I'm just trying to pick up a little, to flood out the paint pick up a little more paint and blend it kind of into both directions. Um, such a little tiny bit of paint on my brush when I'm picking it up, because I don't want to overload it. You know, my goal is to blend it out so that in some areas it looks light and in some areas it looks dark, that it's, that it's got kind of a good contrast to it. Um, this would be great too to add like maybe a little bit of white somewhere as a highlight. But if I don't like how something is, I just go in with a little more of that color paint and a little bit of water. So I'm gonna do these. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of water here on these edges. I still have quite a bit of that light colored paint on my brush, so I'm gonna go over these areas, do a little blending. And I'm going to pick up some of this dark paint here and kind of go back on some of those areas and make it a little darker and blend that backwards. So I think it just takes, like, I don't think blending is necessarily hard. Where people get in trouble, in my opinion, is when they either have way too much water or way too much paint. The goal, you're not, like, you have to have a wet brush. This is not like dry brushing. Um, you have to have a nice, a nice smooth consistency to work with to blend it out, but you need to really avoid oversaturating any of it with either paint or water. And I would also say that once you like what you've blended, try, try to let it go. Um, it's, it's, I won't say it's never gonna be perfect because clearly we've seen some people can do this pretty freaking perfect, but um, try not to stress about it. it. At least if you've if you're new to it, like you're not gonna have the same results as somebody who's done this, you know, a thousand times. 
So just understand that it's trial and error more than more than anything, it's trial and error. So just keep with just the tiny, tiniest bit of paint, like almost where you can't see it on your bristles. And like, I mean, just literally, I just pulled up the tiniest bit of paint and then I'm kind of, you know, trying to be super light handed about all of it. Um, so the reason I'm doing this area over, even though I'm not blending, is because I hit it with my brush and that had a bit of the white on it or the lighter blue, I should say. And I don't want it to look spotty. At least I don't think I do. So now I'm going in with the light. And good feathery strokes helps too, I think. Sometimes a circular stroke is a good stroke when you're first blending. Um, I find circles are kind of really nice for that. Just have a little piece I missed over here. Okay. Oh, I've got a whole section I missed over here. Holy heck, there's like a whole, whole area. Rashonda, where are you? Why didn't you say, hey, you missed a spot? Oh, that's right, because it's not facing the camera. Seems like a good 12 inches over here that I missed completely. Okay. Can you guys see the blending on there? Let me, let me kind of try to bring it in a little bit so you can see a little better. We'll do a little quick flyby. that area and you see the and then this area here you can kind of see it um, it'll dry less streaky so you'll really be able to tell when it's dry but for now this is where we are and I got to do this part so I'm gonna move this I'm gonna angle it down a little so you can see that part a little better whoops it's a little far oh well thank you for all the hearts everybody let's see I will need my paint. Okay, let me try to do this. And hopefully, you can see it. Let me check the comments. Ooh, egg salad. Yummy. I haven't eaten lunch yet. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Lisa. Um, yeah, I haven't eaten lunch yet. I Got Starbucks sitting, oh, right here, actually. Right there. We did a Starbucks run at the store and oh, I was grateful for it, man. Sometimes when you don't have time to eat, a nice cold drink is everything. So again, I'm just pulling some water um, this is a little dark in my brush, so I'm going to add some light back in here. And I got it up on my corbel part, so I'm going to go back in with some dark. I'm going to fill this in while I'm at it. And that doesn't have to be perfect, you know. Again, it doesn't have to be. Don't get intimidated by Brandy and Christana. You know, they didn't start in that place either. So it takes time. It takes time to learn your craft. And they've spent a lot of time doing it and a lot of man hours. So just remember that. It's gonna be tough to get there without the same practice. Most people don't pick things up the first or second try. Most people takes a few times to get it. Some more light up in this area. So again, circles can sometimes be your friend in that way. I like to, I, I kind of like the flicking, which I was showing you when I was doing that big piece that I do a lot of flicking when I'm blending, kind of in all different directions. You can kind of start to see that this is blending out a little better. I've kind of got that a little streaky right there. I just want to be careful because I don't want to pull in too much dark over here either. 
feels a little better. But you can start to see where you've got some fade here. I can even let this dry a little bit, maybe add a little bit more light here. But I do plan on giving this whole thing a, um, a white glaze over the top of it. So is that the top to a dollhouse, Connie? Good to see you, Connie. No, this is, um, this is one of the giant arches that we had over the paint studio area. It was a little farmhousey, hasn't sold yet, so I thought if I made it a little more coastal, because we sell so much coastal, that that would be helpful. We just don't do a lot of farmhouse. So, and Connie, I know you know the secret, so no giving it away. Because you and I spoke yesterday about it. Mum's the word. So let's see, Rashonda says, I'm just learning which color to blend successfully is a part is a part of the learning curve as well. Wish we could all just pick up a brush and already know all the tips. Yeah, I mean that would be good. Um, that would be fun. I'm not going to disagree with that at all. Um, I will say for color blending, one of the keys is to try to stay within two color blocks. Um, no, Rashonda, I'm not giving you a hint. Um, the color blocks. It, uh, so like if you were, if you were to go to like a paint fan deck kind of thing, and you would see if you stay within two colors so no more than skipping one those are going to blend together really easily if you just go to the very next one it's going to be a very you're almost it's going to be an almost imperceptible blend so those are like too close so the idea is the ideal would be to skip one um, and go to the next color there you definitely shouldn't go any more than skipping two it'll be such a big unless you're unless you're skilled if you're skilled, you can blend almost any color combinations um, once you really know what you're doing. Um, it'll take longer, but you can do it. But when you're new, if you can try to stay like no more than, you know, two, two steps away from the original color, it'll be much easier to blend. So these are probably, these are probably two to three. Um, but it's still pretty easy. So there are other colors in between here for sure. That, but it will be almost imperceptible. But this is why sometimes I'll bring in like, you know, I'll bring over like the Haint Blue, which is a really soft light blue, but it's a bright blue. So like I could add this into little sections of it if I wanted to and it would create a lot of brightness in this piece. Because it's very bright. Kind of got a little too much here. So, you know, and if you find that you've washed out too much, you just bring a little bit of that dark back. And just keep working it, right? Just keep working it until you're, you're happy with where you are. The key is you're not going to just brush it on and be done. I mean, you've, it takes a few minutes, you know. This is a longer process than just slapping paint on. But it's oh so worth it. All right. Connie, thank you for sealing your lips. And keep your brush clean, right? Absolutely. If your brush, so this is, again, if you're getting too much paint, on your brush if you're picking up too much paint then you know I said the two reasons people people have problems is they either have too much water or they have too much paint so if your brush gets muddy you're using too much paint okay and you need to cut back on how much paint you're bringing on to the piece and you need to get that paint off like my brush it's damp but it's not drippy wet, okay? And like, 
trying to let you look at it. If you look at it, there's almost, I'm trying to get to the camera, there we go. If you look at it, there's not much paint in there. And when I pick up paint, I'm typically picking up that amount of paint. And you see how, I'm trying to get to the camera from down on the floor. See how little paint is going on there? Like literally, that's plenty of paint because I have water to move it around. So if that, if I pick up that amount of paint and I, it's not enough, then I go get more water. And now you can see on here how much, um, how much that moved around. So you don't need much. You just need a little. Too much paint and too much water are the culprits of people who cannot master the blend. Hi, Tammy. So again, when I just picked up paint, like almost imperceptible on my brush, okay? But it's plenty because there's water here, right? So I just need to let that move around, brush it out, kind of flick it out. Hope that makes sense everybody so like i want to do this little section right here literally that's all the paint i picked up that little tiny little nugget right in there in the corner and i'm going to put this right here and i'm going to push that around to create a little bright spot if it's not enough i'll pick up another little dab like the same okay and now you can start to see that it's a little brighter in the center. So it really is like so little bits of paint. I got that side to do. trying to get where you could see it. Oh, my honey's watching. Hi, love. Hi, Debbie. Oh, that was too much water. I'm going to get the whole area kind of damp. Pull around the paint that's already there. Okay. So now I'm going to take my dark and I'm going to start working it. Just the tiny, where's my brush? See, just the tiny, tiniest bit of paint on there. I'm gonna work that around the edges. The more water you're using, the less paint you need, for sure. Because you'll just end up with mud, which is what Connie was playing to. Just not much, just like tiny, tiny, tiny bits. And I picked up Again, almost nothing, but see it's plenty to come in and brighten it up. If I just kind of flick it in all directions, it works. And if you find your edges are too blended out, you can go in and you can just add a little bit more. So it's just Kind of going back and forth. I'm gonna wipe this off because I want to pull this white out a little bit more towards it. I don't want to say add more. There we go. Oh, it's doing what I want it to do. I should just have a little too much water on here for now. I'm gonna try to add a little more darkness up here like this got a little too light when I when I got too much water on there. Okay. All right, I feel pretty good about that. How do you like the blending? What do you think about it? How do you like the colors? Do you like the colors better than the gray that it started off as? Is it got a good coastal vibe going on now? I'm 
gonna go grab my heat gun real fast. I'll let you admire the colors for a moment. All right, should be right back. back. Sorry about that. I thought I brought it in here, but I clearly did not. I did grab the quiet one though. So there's that. Okay. Who's talking? Who's talking? Oh, Rashonda, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. only been blending um, this style for about a year so I've done other kinds of blending so it came fairly natural but this style of blending I've only been doing for about a year so um, it can be learned and the first few times I'm gonna say I was so frustrated and I have found for me that I blend certain paints one style better than I blend another. Um, Dixie Belle and Bungalow would be my favorite for this kind of blending, whereas I do really like DIY for more of the blending, like the like the Dion kind of blending, except that I hate that I cannot tell what color it's going to be. That drives me crazy that I cannot tell what color it's going to be. Okay, so I feel good about that. So I'm gonna put this in water. So Connie, Melissa is not here, spill the beans. Oh, look at you, trying to be sneaky. I see what you're trying to do there. I see what you're trying to do there. Now, now, Rashonda. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start um, giving it a good top coat. I flicked that over there. Give it a good top coat. So I have um, Dixie Bell's clear flat top coat. And I'm gonna top coat this because I wanna use the white um, glaze. And the thing with that is that if you glaze and you haven't done a top coat, it will actually change your paint color. And that's not what I'm going for. And be careful when you are top coating or you're doing anything liquid over anything you just blended because you could cause the blending to change a little bit because it's being re-wet. So be cognizant of that. Oh great, I've got a hair in here. Nobody wants my hair in their piece. Hang on. It's like a gift, it's like a DNA gift. I do this at home and I have to try to make sure I don't leave cat fur in my pieces. Anybody else have that problem? You do wanna be sure when you're using a liquid top coat that you do not like it goes on it goes on white and then dries clear but if you see any drips or anything like that those may end up being being able to be seen so you want to be tr you want to try to make sure that you always clean up any little drip marks and things like that Hopefully 
little freckles will go away here where I accidentally, looks like I must have flicked, you know, when I do my little flicking that I must have right here. I'm hoping they'll go away, but if not, you know, this is made to, I want this to look, you know, blendy and beachy and all that. So I think it will be just fine if it does end up showing. It's like character marks. This is one of the reasons why I try not to do anything that has to be super pristine because I get really mad if, you know, I'm at the end and I do one simple thing and it screws the whole thing up and now I have to do another hour of blending. Like, I love to watch what Brandy does. Her blend blending is so freaking spectacular. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't, I feel like there's so much room for error. Um, and I'm just not that perfect. I mean, I'm not saying like she's perfect, but I mean like you, you really have to like watch what you're doing and take your time and be slow and be thoughtful and all that and not really my MO. I'm a fast painter. I like to be done quickly. Oh, sorry you can't see my face in here, guys. Hopefully at least it's a pretty piece to work on and you can hear me okay. If your speakers are off, you're, it's really boring right now. Most certainly. So this is why we always struggle with the camera angles. It's like, do you want to see close up of what we're doing? Or do you want to see us when we're talking to you? It's really hard to get both in the same frame sometimes. That's why when I start doing the classes, I will literally have Sue or somebody with the camera like hovered around me so they can either hold it so to see me talking or up close where my hand is so they can see what I'm doing. These are both important, which is why sometimes live video or recorded videos are more interesting than live but I like I actually prefer most of the time the live videos because I like to kind of have an idea of how long the process takes and I'm watching for the value of being entertained and you know kind of hanging out with the person if you will not just learning the steps so let's see questions Yes, dog hair in everything. Yep, yep. Uh, Roshana, well, we'll see if the news is worth the wait or not. Um, we shall see, we shall see. How is the Dixie Belle flat? I love flat finishes too. They are my favorite. We all know general finishes flat out flat is hands down my favorite. I also am a huge, huge fan of Wise Owl's flat varnish. Um, I do really like the Dixie Belle flat. I do not always love the Dixie Belle satin. Um, I do like it on light colored pieces, the satin. I do not like the satin on dark colored pieces. So there we go. Connie says, it's an intriguing piece. Well, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. Um, yeah, I like lives too, Rashonda. Like sometimes I just want it on in the background too, you know, so if, if I'm watching, you know, a 10 minute video, which I love to like watch Reclaimed Air Room and watch her do her videos and she does great editing. Um, they're really nice and I can learn a great technique and I'll watch those at night when like I'm almost ready for bed, but I'm not quite and it's like, okay, one more little YouTube and then I'm good and and that's my little 10 minute YouTube versus my hour YouTube. 
time. But I really, most of the time in the evening, tend to watch the hour ones. If a video is less than 10 or 15 minutes, I probably won't even watch it most of the time. I figure there's, like, if there wasn't enough there to get me for 10 minutes, you know, that there wasn't enough to hold my attention for 10 minutes, you know, they didn't think that the content was good enough for 10 minutes, it's probably not enough content to amuse me, for me to care about it. Unless it's, like, work stuff, like SEO or TubeBuddy or something like that. You know, I don't want to watch a 45 minute video on, um, how to write a title for your video. That would be enormously boring. Okay. I'm going to think that is dry enough that I can start moving on to the glaze. Okay. So now I have the whitewash glaze. I have one coat of top coat down. Um, you can choose to distress before or after top, um, before or after doing the glaze. I'm not sure how much distressing I will do. I will do some for sure, but I'm gonna do my distressing after I do the glaze and then I'll probably do one to two more layers of top coat over that to protect it. Um, and again, you do not have to top coat to glaze. It's just recommended because otherwise it will soak, it, your, your paint color will absorb the glaze and it will actually change your paint color. So for me, I'm, this is just another way to layer and I love the layering of things. So, so some of my supplies here are, oh no, Oh, I suppose I should show you this because you know how I'm always making messes. Can you see it? Can you see what I've done? Yes, that's right. That's me spilling yet again. I just spilled top coat all over the floor. All over the floor. Yep, yep. Okay, we're just gonna kind of puddle that out of the way and I'll clean that up when we are done being live. Thankfully that canister didn't have too much left in it, but yep, yep, top coat, spill. What is it we always say? We make mistakes, so you don't have to. That's at least corralled now. Okay, dokie. So I am gonna take a rag that I'm gonna have um, available to me. And the brush that I used for the top coating. And I'm going to basically, this is gonna be thin and I'm gonna sort of paint it onto these edges where I kind of want it to go in the cracks and crevices and then I'm going to take and I'm going to wipe it back. If it's streaky and you don't like it, then you can use water to take it off. This for me is where I'm going to get a little bit of my weathered edge to it. So I'm going to actually kind of let it go on here. You got to do this in small sections and then I'm going to wipe it back. And what you'll see is you'll still see the blending underneath, but can you see that it's kind of, I'll not get you close again, um, but it's kind of going into all the, the depth of the, like the wood grain. And using glaze is a lot like using wax. To remove glaze, you can use water, if it's a water-based glaze, and most are, or you can use glaze. So like if I want to take off more here, I can add more 
and then wipe it away. So I'm using the white wash glaze in this case as a way to add more weathering to my piece. So I've got it blended, but it's a little pristine for my taste in case you, know, you didn't gather that. Those of you who know me. So I'm using it to kind of pull more into it more interest, more, more depth, more softness. <laughs> Fire Heather for it. <laughs> Heather, you're fired. She can't hear me from back here. She's out there. But when I, but when I, I leave, I'll go out there. I'll, I'll, I'll let her know she's fired. That was enormously funny, Lorraine. Enormously funny. I think she's going to get a good laugh. Are you the person who came in the other day and said, but you still work here, you're fired. You're the person who gets fired every day on the show. Hi, Brianna. So this is an old arch that we've had since we opened the store. So for about a year now, and it hasn't sold. It was very farmhouse looking when we started. Sort of very gray, gray on gray on gray. And Coastal sells in our store really well. So I have blended some Dixie Bow Blues here, and uh, Savannah Mist, and why can't I not remember the name of the other blue? Uh, another blue by Dixie Bow. Oh, I just got a little distressing here, a little wet distressing, I guess, which is fine, because again, distressing is good, that's what I like. I was gonna come on here with sandpaper, but since I can do it while it's Kind of wet. I think I'll do that because that looks like good weather right there. Can I do more of that up here? No, I just want to go up there, but wiped off too much of the glaze. So now I, now that I've done that, I've sealed it and I'm adding some whitewash glaze by Dixie Bell. And this is to kind of get into the grain lines and pull back a little and just to give it a little more weathered look because I like things rusty and chippy and um, that's kind of how I, how I do things. I'm, I'm a big fan of the rusty chippy look. I love milk paint. It just, we haven't found that it sells a ton. Um, either probably cause farmhouse doesn't really sell here. So. Yes to distress. Oh, thank you for saying it's pretty. I appreciate that. I can't wait to go tell Heather she's fired. I haven't fired her all day. I only think I fired her once this week. I gotta be careful going that way because I just spilled like a third of a bottle of top coat on the floor. It's really very horrible. I don't do well when I'm left to my own self. Has anybody noticed that? This is why I keep a paparazzi. I'm the big thinker. I'm not the details girl. Anybody figured that out yet? I need people around me to help me pick up all the, all the mess I make. I might be good at what I do, but I'm not neat about it. Okay, I'm gonna move up top so that I don't end up in that puddle. Can you see the difference in the glaze here? Let me, let me pull the camera in a little so you can see. See glazed, you can see how it's kind of working into these crevices. 
and then not glazed up here. Um, the other thing you could do is you could do this with a wet rag and you can um, kind of like the old ragging technique where you take it and you, you basically do this and you leave some of it behind. Um, that's a completely different look and not the look I'm going for in this. That's also a great way to use glaze. It leaves a ton of texture that way. And sometimes I'll do that when I'm layering glazes because then if you're layering multiple glazes that way, you get amazing texture. Then it looks like it's really artful and has a lot of depth to it. It can take a very simple piece and make it really interesting. And so again, this is why I don't often worry about how pristine my blending is and stuff like that because I'm layering different aspects on it. So nothing has to be specifically perfect in it because it all just sort of works together in the end. You think Dixie Bell has six or seven different glazes. We also carry Wise Owl glazes here. They must have 15. Um, so I get to have a lot of fun. And, and um, Wise Owl in particular has got some amazing metallic glazes that I love to use. And sometimes I'll mix those metallic glazes with my top coat so that my top coat has a real shimmer to it. Like it's, you're not wiping it on and wiping it off. You're just, you're basically diluting the glaze inside your, your top coat. So like if I wanted a really subtle whitewash, I could mix some of this with my top coat. When I put it on and rather wipe it off, I would just let it go on. And if it had some streaks here and there, that would just be, you know, like good farmhouse streaks, which are really awesome. But there's, there's some real pretty iridescent ones that I like to add to my top coat sometimes. There's a midnight, a midnight blue one that's absolutely amazing when you mix it and you top coat over black. Um, it adds this um, almost like a black pearl effect to it. Really pretty. I'll have to show you that technique at some point here. You know, just fun things to, you know, zhuzh your pieces up a bit. And, and if you're adding, you know, a metallic or a glaze to your top coat, it's not any extra steps really other than mixing it up. Um, but you're just gonna, you're just gonna paint it right on and let it stay there. You don't have to do the wipe off or anything. But now if I choose not to distress this, which of course I'm gonna distress this because that's just who I am. Um, if I were to do that, I wouldn't have to do another top coat. Like you don't have to top coat over a glaze. Uh, you should top coat before you glaze, but once you've glazed, then you can be done. It'll, it'll set up hard like a top coat. It takes a little while to dry, but it'll set up hard like a top coat. But I'm mostly using this to try to accentuate the where there is wood grain here to give it a little texture. And then I'm also putting in some like white in the crevices, which is almost like waxing. I, I love the look of waxing. I'm not a super fan of waxing. So if I can get the look of waxing without having to wax, which is also why, you know, you hear me say that I love Flat Out Flat from General Finishes is because Flat Out Flat 
when you're done with it, feels like you waxed the piece. And I love the feeling of wax furniture. I just absolutely hate waxing it. Can you see the difference between this side and this side? How much more like weathered wood this looks like? It looks like it's been more weathered. It's still pretty blue. You can still see all of the, the blending that I did down there, all of the shading effects. But when you add the, the white glaze, it, it just sort of um, weathers it a little bit, makes it feel a little, um, a little worn. Like it's been out there for a while. You get to see the texture in the wood still versus when you paint things, you don't always get that, that wood texture. I really like the wood texture. Now I'm probably not gonna distress this on camera today because before I distress it, since I have glazed it, I wanna be sure that it is completely dry. Um, I don't wanna, I don't wanna pull up too much of the paint. You know, I want it to have, um, I want the paint to dry and all of this glaze to dry before I distress it. And you'll notice that I'm going in small sections the bigger sections you go in, the more chance you have of it drying before you can wipe it back. And that can often make it super spotty. Again, if it does that, you can add water or you can go over with the glaze and pull it back. I just find it's less work if you just work in sections. It just seems, it just seems easier to me. Then nothing dries, and it's just an easy white back. And I don't tend to run into too much resistance if it hasn't dried um, where it meets up. It usually doesn't have like a big joint or anything where it meets up. Let's see. Oh, I will call you Bree. Okay, absolutely. Um, you know. Interestingly enough, if our daughter um, Paige, or excuse me, um, not Paige, if our son John had been a girl, uh, her name would have been Brianna. So um, anyway, that's interesting bit, but it was a boy, so, so he's John. Okay, let's see. Glaze seems to sleep into the paint Whereas dry brushing sits on top. Both are good techniques, just depends on the look you're going for. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, it definitely, it's sinking into all the little, all the little nooks and cranny, whereas um, it's sort of, I'll say it's the op, I'll, I'll say it's the opposite effect of dry brushing. You are, on dry brushing, you're looking for the high points and on glazing, you're looking for the low points. So you're like wiping off the high points so that your base color is on the high points with glazing. On, on dry brushing, you're wiping off the, or you're not wiping it off, you're covering up the high points so that your, your new paint color, your dry brushing on there sits on the high points and your base color sits in the low points. So I'll say it's the opposite effect. I'm sorry I'm having a real struggle being actually on the camera today. Yeah, I knew I got that you meant seep. Um, hi, Lynn. Okay, so I think I've just missed these side areas. I'm trying to figure out how to move this a little and I'll see if I can scooch into the camera zone. There, look. Hi, I'm still here. Pull up there. There I am. Hi. Actually, I did this side, I didn't do that side. <sighs> so let's turn this around, turn this beast around. And then you can see the top too. Let's 
see it from a different angle. But then I can be in the be in it for a little bit. You can see that I have a face down here. There we go. Hello. Doing lives by yourself sometimes it's, it's not as easy as when you have somebody to help you. I'm gonna get a different paper towel because that one's pretty saturated. I just have this section left to do. Hopefully somehow I've still, I mean, there's still several of you here, so I must have done an okay job entertaining you by myself, even without my posse. Don't I sound important? I have a posse. curious to see what people think um, about this piece versus what it looked like before. I actually have another one of these so I'll be able to get a good like before and after picture. Um, I can almost do them side by side even. Kind of funny that way. that you can still see the blend. Um, that was one thing I was a little bit concerned about, but I've done it before, so I wasn't terribly concerned about it, but these colors are close enough together. The blues, you know, they're not terribly far apart from each other color-wise. Um, whether you'd be able to really still see the blending after the whitewash, but I'm really glad to see that you can. And for people who don't like, who love the look of white wax or dark wax, because you could use a dark glaze too. We um, have a walnut glaze that's really pretty. So if you love the look of like the antiqued pieces, but you hate glazing, I mean you hate uh, waxing, that's always a good, a good option. Okay guys, I think, I think I'm actually done here. Oh, the other thing I can do with this, um, kind of like a dry brush technique because it's gonna dry a little bit sheer is if I want to in some of these areas where I wanted to have it a little lighter, I can go on and I can effectively dry brush some of the glaze in patches, which will create kind of a brightness or I could swirl it in that area, right? And create in there and it's gonna be, um, to some degree, it's going to be um, translucent. So it'll create the brightness. And so this is also a way that you can kind of add some highlights um, and it's not gonna be super streaky because it is a glaze not full saturation of paint so I hope that makes sense now that I've done that here to show you I'm gonna have to do it over there oh yep I do have two of them um, and it would be cute over twin beds absolutely this would be an adorable little um, coat rack or um, headboard, especially if you put some hooks on here where she could hang her um, dollies or things like that. Be super cute. Dry brush technique, so still gotta offload and then I'll just swirl some in here to create a little more of that, that brightness effect. This is one of the best times to use a round brush. It's really hard to swirl like um, flat brushes but it adds, it, it can add some brightness without it. Um, it's gonna be relatively sheer as opposed to paint, which is, you know, heavy. So it doesn't have as much, it's gonna be a, a lot more of a dry brushed effect um, with very minimal um, blending in that you have to do because it's already super sheer. So this is my piece. I hope that you guys had a great time. I hope you learned something. I hope that um, you can have a good time trying one of these techniques. I'm going to come around because I don't have anybody to hit stop for me. So thanks for joining me, guys. 
I still, I still have this big puddle right here of um, top coat that I spilled. So uh, I'll be cleaning that up afterwards. But I hope you enjoyed me painting this really big arch. Thanks for joining me, guys. Bye. See you Monday.